International Space Station. It's hard to think of a single more iconic project undertaken by humanity, bringing together 15 different countries, including some traditional adversaries, with a common goal of living and working beyond Earth's atmosphere, learning what we need to learn in order to take those next steps beyond Earth orbit. Ever since I was a child, it's been there in the skies above, a monument to what humanity can accomplish when working together. But the time of the ISS is ending. It won't be this year, it won't be next year, but the cracks are starting to show. At the end of 2030, NASA plans to deorbit the ISS, crashing this massively expensive structure back into Earth's oceans. It's possible that this timeline could be extended a bit longer, but the station can only last so long. While the ISS is in its twilight years, China is currently building a brand new space station for the modern age. A signal that they are serious about space and looking to surpass the Western world when it comes to space technology. However, Western leaders are not about to concede leadership in this final frontier without a fight. So what comes next? Historically, building a space station in low Earth orbit would be prohibitively expensive for private companies. But over the past decade, new technologies, including reusable rockets, have drastically reduced the cost to put mass into orbit. And this is a trend that will only continue. For the first time ever, Building a space station is within reach for private commercial companies. There are several possibilities currently in the works as potential successors built entirely by private companies who expect NASA to be just one of several customers. Today, we are going to take a look at the future of commercial space stations, how this will shape the future of the space industry as a whole in the companies who are building that. VAST is developing the world's first commercial space station called Haven One. It will initially function as a small independent crewed station in low earth orbit. The launch is scheduled for no earlier than August 2025 on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. That launch will be quickly followed by VAST One the first human spaceflight mission to Haven 1 on a SpaceX Dragon spacecraft. The vehicle and its four-person crew will dock with Haven 1 for up to 30 days while orbiting Earth. VAST is selling up to four crewed seats on the inaugural mission to Haven 1. This initial station is planned to be eventually connected to a much larger artificial gravity space station. The company is actively hiring for engineering positions to support their endeavors. The artificial gravity is achieved by the centrifugal force of the large spinning structure in space. This mimics the gravitational environment human bodies are accustomed to, thus reducing the detrimental physiological effects that extended stays in zero gravity cause. The station can provide various gravitational environments depending on how close to the center of the station you are. This includes Earth, Venus, Mars, Moon, and near zero gravities, which will be great for future experiments. The space station will be launched by SpaceX's Starship Transportation System, taking advantage of the much larger fairing volume and launch capacity. The station will comprise seven individually launched Starship class modules. It will have a total crew of 81, and the timeline to launch of this artificial gravity station is planned for the 2030s. This incredibly ambitious project could lead the next generation of human presence in low Earth orbit. Oh, and by the way, before we dive into that next space station, I did just want to take a second to ask you to consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already, because it really does help out so much with the channel. And now, let's keep going. 
Next, let's dive into the exciting plans for the Orbital Reef, a commercial space station project spearheaded by Blue Origin and Sierra Space. Orbital Reef is a commercially developed, owned and operated space station that will be built in low Earth orbit. It's designed to open up space for business and travel, creating a new ecosystem for the future. Think of it as a mixed-use business park in space. This project is backed by many industry leaders, including Boeing, Redwire Space, Genesis Engineering Solutions, and Arizona State University, as well as, of course, Blue Origin and Sierra Space. The station will provide end-to-end -end services, including space transportation and logistics, space habitation, equipment accommodation and operations, including onboard crew. It's designed to support the proprietary needs of diverse tenants and visitors. The station is expected to start operating in the second half of this decade. Human visits and station resupply will be provided via Sierra Space's Dream Chaser space vehicle. The first cargo variant of which is actually nearing completion now and getting ready to go to the International Space Station. Sierra Space will also provide state-of-the-art inflatable habitats, which are incredibly light and compressed down into small spaces for launch. Speaking of launch, of course, the primary rocket for this station is planned to be Blue Origin's New Glenn, a massive first-stage reusable rocket that is planned to be having its first flight this year. The open system architecture allows any customer or nation to link up and scale to support demand. Blue Origin expects NASA to be a primary customer, but also just one of many customers, including researchers, manufacturers, visitors, and even nations without space programs. The business model is strategically designed to support a diverse portfolio of uses. The vision for Orbital Reef is to provide a truly extraordinary experience, whether you are in orbit for research, logistics, tourism, or other applications. However, the plans for this station do come with a big caveat. Although nothing has been confirmed by the companies themselves, rumors are beginning to swirl that this partnership may break up before it comes to fruition placing the future of this station in jeopardy as the companies refocus on other priorities. Next up, Axiom Space. Axiom is a leading provider of human spaceflight services and developer of human-rated space infrastructure. They were the first to ferry a flight of all private citizens to the International Space Station, ISS, aboard the Axe one mission, which launched in April 2021. They're using these missions to inform the design and use of their own space station. In January 2020, Axiom won NASA's contract to construct the first commercially manufactured module for the ISS. Their first module is expected to dock to the ISS by 2026. This will serve as the springboard for the remaining pieces of Axiom's planned space station architecture. HAB-1 is just the beginning, though. Four more modules are planned, including HAB-2, which arrives in 2027 and doubles the crew capacity. This module will be a powerhouse, boasting its own environmental control and life support system. A third module will be added a year later, and finally, a thermal power module, scheduled for some time before 2030, will allow Axiom Space Station to detach from the ISS and become a free-flying, commercially-run, low-Earth orbit LEO destination. The Canadarm3 robotic arm, made by MDA, and inspired by the Canadarm2 on the ISS, will be Axiom's own handyman in orbit. It'll help with maintenance, inspections, and even maneuvering payloads. 
Axiom Space plans to conduct astronaut training for commercial astronauts to host governments and commercial partners. Finally, we have Starlab, another contender in the commercial space station race. This one's being designed and built by Starlab Space, a joint venture between Voyager Space and Airbus. Starlab takes a different approach compared to Axiom's modular design. They're aiming for a single, monolithic launch, a true feat considering its spacious interior. Currently scheduled for no earlier than 2028, Starlab will hitch a ride on SpaceX's massive Starship rocket. Starlab prioritizes crew, comfort, and productivity. The spacious main module, dubbed the Loop module by Airbus, features a multi-deck design with a central tunnel. Think of it as a comfortable space habitat with plenty of room to move around, research, and even relax. But the coolest feature might be the central tunnel surrounded by a greenhouse. Just imagine cultivating fresh veggies while gazing out at the Earth from space. Starlab isn't just a fancy space Hilton, though. It's designed to be a premier research facility in low Earth orbit. The spacious interior allows for dedicated science labs equipped with cutting edge tech. Researchers will have ample room to conduct experiments in various fields, from material science to life sciences, all while taking advantage of the unique microgravity environment. Just like Axiom Station, Starlab is designed to be a versatile space platform. It won't be limited to government research. Starlab Space plans to cater to a wide range of clients including private companies and space agencies conducting groundbreaking research in microgravity, or even manufacturing new materials in space like pharmaceuticals or fiber optical cables. Starlab represents a unique approach to commercial space stations, with its focus on a single spacious launch and a dedication to scientific research Starlab positions itself as a front-runner in the race to create a thriving commercial space ecosystem in low Earth orbit. So those are our commercial space stations of the future, at least right now. I highly doubt that all of them will get made, but if we're lucky, maybe one or two of them will actually come to fruition down the line. Let me know which one you think is the most likely to get built and which design you, you personally like the best. Always interested to hear your comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.